I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mike. With an intro like that, it must be time for the Mythwits. The show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every week, we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse and to play a game with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week are my co-hosts, Mike Kafis. Hello. And James Carpio. Greetings and salutations. And this week, we are joined by Kyle, and I'm going to screw this up, Vote? Pretty close. Vote. Oh. Okay. Vote. Okay. Uh, Kyle Vote is an actor, a gamer, a photographer, IT tech, hand model, and ex-rocket scientist who is known for The Room and shows on Maze Arcana and other Twitch channels. So, Kyle, Kyle, we have been, we've been on a journey, Mike and I. We, we, <laughs> we, we... we, we we watched the room, the whole thing. We didn't skip. Yeah. We didn't fast forward. Mike took wow. some breaks. Uh, in, in, in my defense, it literally took me about a week to get through it. <laughs> you gotta watch it with the crowd, otherwise it's not as fun. Yeah, it, right. It, it, yeah, it, and I, I honestly, having not watched, obviously, we we just watched the uh, Disaster Artists uh, this today, and so okay. not knowing that I should have watched it through the lens of a comedy, like. I had no, I was just, I was mortified and, and, and just uh, tortured, but uh, <laughs> it really helped to have watched the, uh, the movie today. And it literally has a new meaning. The entire movie has changed. It's transformed. Yeah. I, I, I can't, I cannot tell you like Pete, what, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. I, I say that my perspective on the whole thing has changed. It's kind of like when I watched, uh, uh, was it No Country for Old Men? And yeah. uh, I was all pissed off. I'm like, they killed the hero off screen. You can't kill the hero off screen. God damn it. And then someone told me, because I'm you know, i thick like this, said, uh, you know, that's not the hero of the movie. The hero was the, the Mexican. I think he's Mexican, right? The, um, the, the, the assassin guy, right? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Oh, oh, the movie makes more sense, and now I like it more. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it's just yeah. how you view the, it. The protagonist, not so much the hero, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, the protagonist. Yeah. Well, that's what I meant, the protagonist. I, I was, I'm rooting for the other guy, and, and I totally shouldn't have been. Uh, yeah. I should have been <laughs> rooting for the I protagonist. remember that, Pete. You were like, I can't believe, why would you have the hero die off screen? What, are you just supposed to assume? Oh, what the hell? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's I, I agree with you at that. And then and then he texted me. Oh, here's here's what you have to do. I'm right. always your guest guy anyway. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Right. So so we yeah. saw the disaster artist today. We went today. Cool. Squeezed it in. A really good Fucking movie. Awesome movie. Very I, good movie. Yeah. By and, and I, I something tells me like if we're to to bash the uh the room is not to bash you right kyle right i mean i, I yeah i would assume that we're we're cool like that having just met <laughs> right. you 10 minutes ago but right. <laughs> uh, i'd have to say that i i think i posted on facebook i said it was the best movie about the worst movie i'd ever seen <laughs> oh yeah but it's, it's you very know. good uh very good story about fighting against the system yeah yeah, yeah. it's it really is and <clears throat> so Mike and I were talking about this, and and when he was like, because uh, he, he's not from he, you know, we've met before, and uh, he's like, he's like, which which guy is he in the movie? And I told him, I told him who you were, and he goes, oh, okay, so he was one of the guys that could actually act. All right, got it. <laughs> <laughs> so so there was you, you, and the guy with the gun that Mike's like, yeah, uh, yeah Dan played Chris R. Yeah, you guys are like you know Oscar worthy. Uh, no one else. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and. And didn't you say they kind of like they were sort of replaced your role halfway through the movie? Uh, the, yeah, the guy sort in the of. party scenes. Uh, they brought in, it's a different character name, but no one ever says the name. But yeah, that's all the stuff that I would have been saying if I would have still been uh, shooting. Oh, okay. Weird, weird. Um, so how did that happen? I mean, what did they, did you just, did he get pissed off at you? Or so, did you go, what the fuck, man? Or, or, or did he just, was he just doing his crazy thing and it just happened or what what was up with that no i was contracted for a set amount of time and i had another project lined up after that one oh, okay. and so i had a hard out date 
mm-hmm. and they got a little behind schedule for a number of different reasons. Mm-hmm. And right. when my date was coming up, I told them ahead of time, I was like, hey, you got to shoot me out. I got to wrap up my scenes. I got I to gotta date out. I got to go. I got to go. And they never did it. And I just, I walked. I had to go to another project. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, hey, James. James, you want to get in here? You've seen you've seen both these movies, right? Yeah, no. Uh, the the way I came into it was there's a YouTube uh, reviewer that goes by the Nostalgia Critic, which oh, yeah. and that's when I first had my uh, first taste of the movie. And then my son shortly after goes, "Hey, I have it on uh, the Rift Tracks version." So those guys are cool too. Yeah, so I ended up watching the Rift Tracks version. I just it was definitely life-changing and <laughs> for the better or, or not, worse <laughs> uh actually for the better and to oh. believe it or not my copy of the room unfiltered through anything is actually still sitting on my shelf but <laughs> just recently over the break i went to go see the disaster artist and it, it was pretty amazing my son said it was different than the book he said the book actually added uh had some parts that weren't in the movie but obviously that's kind of uh, the way things goes. However, seeing uh, Tom, well, portrayal of Tommy Wiseau uh, in his early career, I grew up in San Francisco. So seeing Tommy was almost like seeing about 10 people I knew from the goth scene and the Ren Faire scene of just this outlandish, crazy person running around in like belts and leather jackets. So it, it definitely was, uh, I was going, wow, I wonder if I almost like, if I ran into him not knowing sometime in the 90s in the San Francisco scene. So uh, it, it's just, but no, altogether though, the, um, the Room, at least in the versions I've seen of it, was a pretty brilliant movie. I would even almost say uh, Ed Wood had a run for his money with uh, Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think Ed was a lot more creative, but yeah, there's <laughs> right. a train wreck capacity going on. Right. Yeah, you know, somebody asked me, they said, I'd mentioned that I, uh, you know, I was like, I got one of the actresses in the room coming on. And I'm really excited about it. You know, I, I'm really excited to talk about it because it's, you know, it's a really hot topic right now. It's a very interesting subject. <clears throat> and they said, oh, do you have Tommy Wiseau? I was like, Fuck no! I don't think I could handle him on the show. I don't. I, I honestly don't think I could. He seems to run over everything and everything everyone says. And you, because I, I watched him on. Um, he he was on with James Franco on um, on Jimmy Kimmel, and he's like, I. It's like talking to a. I don't know, another planet or something. He doesn't answer questions. He answers questions that are not asked to him. He's just all over the place. So he's just like a politician. Yeah. Oh well. True. Very. Oh. So hence the one game we had thought about playing. What it makes total sense. But he's. You know. He, he doesn't talk about his age or where he's from or anything like that. Do you. Do you think that. I'm. I'm gonna hypothesize here just a tiny bit. Do you think that maybe he came from like a crime family or something? Like he's like the son. Like like maybe one of the sons of like some Polish crime family or something. I mean, um, is is that crazy or is that a possibility? Well, no, I, I know a lot of the, the stuff, but um, no, it's not a Polish crime family. Okay, all right. I didn't know. I just thought, you know, hey, he got money somehow. And I don't know, I read somewhere, um, Cesaro or something had written, and it's kind of cliff notes from the book, uh, that he um, that he made it in real estate. And uh, uh, He got a few like things, that. yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, he owns some of the real estate down on the, the wharf, if I remember right, in, in San Francisco. Some business uh, buildings down there, so... You've got a good chunk of change from that. I mean, oh. is there any information that generally somebody wouldn't know, would want to know, and you feel okay to tell us? Anything juicy? I mean, I'm going to put uh, it like that. <laughs> not not really related to Tommy. I think all this stuff that he's let get out there has gotten out there. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, how did you how did you wind up how did you wind up in the movie? I mean, was it just a, like a was it a casting call that you went to and um, got cast for it, or, or how did that happen? Pretty much, he put a breakdown out in Backstage West at the time, and this was way back in the day when they still were using Backstage West a lot. And uh, I just submitted the headshot, got called in, auditioned in, and got it. Okay, all right. And then when you showed up, were you like, "What the fuck is this?" Was it, or, or was it cool, or, or was it? I mean, I don't know. Was it was it like a normal set, or? Well, at the time, it was probably my third project that I had okay. done. Uh, so I didn't have a whole lot of comparison and the other ones were like student films. So for me, it was, 
kind of weird in the fact that it felt a lot like some weird theater audition since I'd done theater <laughs> before. Mm. And I thought, this, this doesn't seem quite right, but what do I know? And since then, I can see that it is totally different and totally wrong, and I would have completely known it if I had been around for a little bit longer before I went into that one. Right, okay. okay. So at what point, like from the first day to whenever it was, did you realize, you know, like obviously not having the experience, but when did you say, this is seeming like a train wreck? Like I, I, I'm oh. really feeling more and more like this is a train wreck. Second very, day, very, third very day. Early. <laughs> uh, very early. The, the fact that we were rehearsing the same scenes weeks prior to actually starting to shoot um, seemed weird. And the fact that he didn't give us the script seemed weird. Mm -hmm. So that was my first indication that I was like, oh, okay, this is not going to be a normal shoot. Um, add to it the fact that I just, as far as I was concerned, it was a vanity project. It was something somebody wanted to make mm -hmm. themselves a star. And I was like, yeah, it probably won't go right. anywhere like all the other people who make their own movies. Right. 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 Unlike today, where you have <laughs> idiots like us that can say, I want to make a show and be dumb as yes. <laughs> dumb Doing as their dirt. own vanity project. <laughs> right. And we get to do our own vanity project. It's awesome. And it doesn't cost us $6 million to do it. Yeah. You know, it's well, funny. I mean, I, back then, you were still shooting stuff on home video recorders and stuff, and it was totally different than what he was doing. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's totally different ball wax. You guys are doing what I would consider a good start. Uh, he jumped in at a really weird point. Right. Oh. right. So, I think well, I'm hearing an endorsement, Pete. Like, maybe we can get Kyle to give us an endorsement better than uh, Masao. <laughs> <than, laughs> well, what Production I was thinking quality was... quality better. <laughs> right, right. He's good. I was thinking... Um, one of the things that I thought about when I was watching it was that if if he had done that today, you know, if he if he had done the room today, the kind of character. Oh, can everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everything went real quiet, real quick. All right. So if he had done that today, I mean, how how much worse is that really? Like like who he is, the the weird person that he is, and everything. Then like like you know like like the, the Kardashians or or uh, Jersey Shore or or Mama June. I mean, honestly, people today would eat. I think he'd be a lot more successful today. As a matter of fact, and and look what's happening. He's becoming successful again. Like he's becoming popular again. Well, yeah, the the crowd that's really interested in that movie is the college crowd that's now aging out to young adulthood. So, yeah, he would, his audience is growing as it as it ages. So, as far as him being more successful now than then, uh, he would have an easier entry into a large audience. But I don't know if it would garner the attention that it got now because of all the other options. Then back right. then, there was all kinds of crazy stuff, but not all of it was this crazy. <laughs> you know what? And I, I blame one person mostly for all of this, and that's my friend Mike Russole. He's okay. the fan who they call Fan Zero. Uh, <laughs> he started it. He got his other film critic friends from film school in on the early screenings when it was still in the theaters in its initial run, and just convinced everybody it was a lot of fun to show up drunk and do a lot of dumb things, and that's, <laughs> that's what started it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the new Rocky Horror, right? I used it to go to Rocky Horror. It really yeah. was. All right, so I'm going to go out on a limb, though, and I'm going to say that probably he would not be as successful had he done this entire project today because I think the trolls would have destroyed him. And I don't know if he would have had the veneer to have the constant pecking of, of a lot of the trolls. Oh, uh, he might not survive another, then. Yeah, I don't know. It's another angle. I don't know if he really goes online. Right. Oh yeah. yeah, probably not. Mm. Hey, I got a I got a question for you. Does he um does does he did you feel kind of sorry for him in a way? I mean, like I'm I'm teeter tottering on the feel sorry for him. Like like when he made his movie and he put his you know he put his passion into it and you know he honestly thought he was making a good movie and thought he was making a quality product and he worked you know he worked hard. It looks like he worked hard on it. Uh, and then it's just it's just so bad. He's so terrible at it. But. And I feel bad for him in that light, but at the same time, I mean, I kind of don't either because he's sort of, 
he sort of almost asked for it by not listening to anyone and by being able to jump over all the barriers that anyone else would hit because he had money. And it's just like, well, dude, what did you think was happening when you spent six million dollars on your own vanity product because nobody would follow this? And you know, what I mean, it's like I teeter totter between being feeling sorry for him and not, you know. Uh, say what you will, a lot of people can identify with that, that they want to do something, but they don't know all the ropes, and so they right. just want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but he did it. He went so far as oh. to actually get the movie he wanted to make made, regardless of what it took. Right. And most people have an idea for a movie and have never made it. Well, true. I mean, fair enough. All right, so yeah. so there's that. And and um, do you think that he's he's cool with that? Do you think he's he's good today with all everything, the way the way everything's played out? Uh, I think he's happier now than okay. he you know, was in the past with all the recent attention. Right. Um, somebody, one of our, uh, my other uh, friends from the movie posted at one point, I want to say it was last week, the week before, he was number six on IMDb. So wow. he had gotten searched to the point where he was the sixth most popular person out of everybody in the film industry. I'm going to file Holy that one under shit. it's better to be infamous than famous. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I, 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 that fame and that success is good to him. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure he wants to parlay it in, and probably will be able to parlay it into further work and further success. Yeah. So I'm curious. I have a question. Um, so in uh, the disaster artist at the last part of the movie where they're showing the, uh, the grand opening and all the people laughing and, and that whole scene, did it go down like that? Because I remember reading somewhere and hearing some feedback that Tommy actually was really upset for a very long time. And it took him a while to come to the realization that it's okay that it was a comedy, but he just got really offended that people saw it in that light. So um, do you know if that was what they portrayed in the movie actually is what went down or? The premiere scene in The Disaster Artist isn't the realistic okay. uh, effect that what really happened. Um, I wasn't there, which is oh. another aspect oh. of showing that. Scratch that question off the list. Then. <laughs> yeah, they've had you there. It's always the truth. Um, but from what I've understood from people who've been there, a bunch of my friends from the movie, um, it was nervous laughter at points and quiet, and he didn't seem to like the reaction. But one of the people he brought with him was a PR person, mm. and on the ride back, he asked her, what she thought and she was smart enough to go you need to rebrand this uh, this is got to be a dark comedy mockumentary kind of mm. movie as opposed to the serious thing you think because otherwise people are just going to look at it as being this terrible thing you've got to make embrace the fact that it's bad <laughs> and he had to think about it i'm sure because i mean when you're told this passion project that you just made sucks enough that everybody's going to treat it that way uh it's going to hurt but yeah. then he was smart enough to go, okay, well, to make this a success, uh, I'll jump in. And he did. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, good. Good for him. All right. So enough about him. I'm talking about you. Uh, how often How often do people recognize you? And is, is it more now than, than later? I mean, do people recognize you as, as, you know, Peter from The Room? Does anybody ever, like, is there any crazy fans, cult fans that, that are like, oh, my God, it's Peter from The Room? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You bump into those every now and again. Um, <laughs> In Hollywood, more so than I think anywhere else in in the country, I'm sure, because of the the interest in the film industry towards how the hell did this get made? <laughs> uh, so um, I would say that it's more than likely that a large concentration of the people who are interested in it live in this area. I do get recognized a bit, not constantly. Um, a lot of the times people will be talking about the movie and then they'll realize that I'm in the movie. Uh, I've had friends for years that did not know that I was in this movie oh, until wow. they watched it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, wow. not like anything I've kept quiet, but it's not something that I walk up and tell everybody, hi, I did that movie. So okay. it's, it's not top on your resume, huh? Right? No? <laughs> it's, it's on the resume. I would say it's top. Okay. So are you, are you glad? Are, are, is, it a, is it a good thing that you did the movie or, or do you see it as a positive yeah. or a negative? No, uh, any project that gets any kind of attention is always good for your career. Okay. Um, hopefully you get more positive attention out of it than negative attention, but even negative attention, it gets people talking about you. Uh, I mean, look at Yui Bowl, how many movies yeah. he made and his movies sucked. His movies are awful. 
They're terrible. And they're not terrible in a funny way. They're just terrible. Right. So uh, it falls under the, if you get known for something that gets you on people's minds and when things come up, uh, you get the opportunities. For instance, uh, one of the commercials I did was the Old Spice series back when they started off with uh, the Old Spice guy and Terry Crews. And uh, I did one of the commercials with Terry. Uh, oh. I'd gone through the the auditioning process and was one of the final selections when it got to the directors who were fans of the room and realized who I was and that helped them choose, I don't know if we're going with him. We want him in our, in our commercial. Nice. Um, <laughs> which led to a weird thing because the guys who were from the ad agency were also fans because they're from Portland and the room's kind of big up there. And so I'm on set with Terry Crews and these guys are all coming up to want to take pictures with me and Terry's staring at me and like, who the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. All right. Well, <clears throat> before we run out of time for the interview, I definitely want to get on to Maze Arcana. Unless there's anything else about, else about the room you want to say before we move on to Maze Arcana, because I want to, I definitely want to talk about that. Um, the only thing that's uh, out there besides the disaster artist is we just threw up a mockumentary that one of the people from the movie wrote here, <clears throat> Robin, who played Michelle, the neighbor. Mm -hmm. Uh, put together a mockumentary series called The Room Actors, Where Are They Now? Yes. Yeah, it's funny to die. And you can see us make fun of ourselves as yeah. if oh, cool. we were like the characters I, in the movie. I caught a couple of that today. I caught a, a, a few a few segments. Yeah, there's a few on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, mm -hmm. we we do stalk our guests. We we absolutely oh, no. stalk our guests. <laughs> <laughs> then why don't you guys know about the documentary called The Room Full of Spoons? I, well that was oh, I've heard another of, I one saw it. I, I didn't at. watch it. Yeah. That was a that was a Kickstarter, correct? Uh, I think so. Well, what do you know? Maybe we do. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so Maze Arcana, that, that's a project you have with, uh, with, with my buddy Satine. Um, mm -hmm. And I did, I think her and Rudy uh, Rutenberg, they, they kind of started that together, right? Um, right? And I know you're, you're a part of that. Um, so, so tell us, you know, from, from your end of it, how did, how did Maze Arcana come about? And, and like, because uh, it's really cool. I mean, I like, I like, you know, it's a very professional setup. Um, you know, I wish We've we could be in the studio. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so how did how did that come about? How did that like go from an idea to like fruition? For a number of years, Satine has been putting together a charity D and D game to raise money for Reach Out and Read, which helps kids learn how to read. And as a result of that, we had done streaming of D and D a while back. Uh, in fact, Matt Mercer's first D and D streaming was at Cherry D Twenty. So we got him sucked into the world of of playing D and D on online. Now, as a result of that, um, Satine said, "I want my own show. I want to play D and D with my friends and put it up online." So they threw together Maze Arcana and uh, asked some of us who played in the charity who was available to come and be on the show. So we started gaming all the time. It's awesome. Okay, and then now, real quick ahead, though. Uh, uh, Satine is uh, a friend of ours as well. Um, she's been on the show. Uh, so I'm just for shits and giggles. How did you guys meet? Um, I met Satine through mutual friends. We were at the conventions at various times, and um, my girlfriend at the time was throwing a party and invited her mm. to come to the party. It was a Mardi Gras party, and when she found out I was in the room, her boyfriend was a big room fan, and so that was my initial introduction to her a long time ago at a random party in L.A. Are you, is there anyone else in that movie that has uh, benefited from that movie more than you? <laughs> Besides uh, Greg and Tommy? Yeah. Yes. I mean, Besides them. The, Greg's book got turned into a movie that's made, I think it's close to $20 million now. Right. Oh, so, yeah, he's doing good. <laughs> I would say, uh, no, it's probably, I've made the most success out of it so far. Nice. All right. All right, good, good job, good job. So, um, so with Maze Arcana, how do you, how do you like how that's been going? I mean, well, you guys are in second year, right? Second. Uh, we just passed our one year anniversary at the beginning of October, so we're a couple months into it. Well, but... for anyone who doesn't know, can we give a more of a description about it? Oh sure. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yep. Um, so what we do is we've got a Twitch streaming channel. Uh, it's twitchtv slash Arcana, but we also play games on twitchtv slash dnd and currently we've got three active shows um sunday's orphan echo which is our original show based in eberron and then we've got two shows on tuesdays and wednesdays in the evening 
uh, that are D and D specific for the promotions that's going on at the time. Right now, we're playing in the Tomb of Annihilation setting that came out this summer, and uh, the current ones are Sirens of the Realms on Tuesday. That's a teen runs, which is uh, an all-girl bard bandering around the Forgotten Realms, and nice. then there's Fury's Fate, which is the sequel to the summer show's Fury's Reach, which was all set in Chult with the Tomb of Annihilation and all the settings that are going on there. Awesome. Okay. And uh, James, you uh, have have you done any uh, online? I've never played online with anyone before. Uh, have you ever done that? Yeah. No. Um, there is a tool called Fantasy Grounds that right. um, I absolutely love. I know that a lot of people use Roll20. It's free. I get it. Fantasy Grounds is a little bit of an investment, but it's an amazing interface, really easy. Um, and if you buy the super duper expensive license, all your friends can play for free. So Nice. Okay. Roll20 well, is the same thing. Uh, it's free for some people, but if you want all the cool stuff, somebody has to subscribe, and then everyone else can use those tools. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I actually have, a, I think, a Roll20... Uh, account back when we had Gygax Magazine, because oh, we were actually Roll20 was the official virtual tabletop of Gygax Magazine, so we all got like the super cool account, but I don't know, it was almost kind of like a change in religion when I found um, Fantasy Grounds. Fantasy Grounds. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh my god, this is the most coolest thing ever, so <laughs> I'm, I'm sold. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I think both of them now are starting to incorporate the D&D Beyond stuff, aren't they? Um, yes, actually, Fantasy Grounds has an official license from WotC, so they can, um, they pretty, and that's another reason why I like to use it. Uh, Roll20 does not, so it's kind of hit or miss as to, it's basically a lot of the SRD stuff, which if you're mm -hmm. trying to run a really cool campaign and pull stuff into, it makes it difficult, you know, unless you're basically really great at pulling in the third party stuff and changing a few things here and there, so... I'm lazy. I'm a lazy gamer. I rather just spend the money and do the cool stuff than try to figure it out. Spend your time gaming, not, not as much time coding. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, the one thing, just to kind of go on that a little bit, is that I found difficulty with streaming and using Fantasy Grounds, and it's just I think because I'm trying to get more fancier than I than I should be. Uh, so I was running a game. I was streaming it. Uh, realized that I didn't have any audio on the first time I did it, so there went two hours. Uh, the second time I got audio, but the video was really bizarre. And then I really wanted to use a, a program called Sirenscape uh, for background music. And unless I d downloaded the um, virtual, I guess, mixer, which I did three different ones and still couldn't figure it out, so eventually, I just kind of said, "All right, this is just too much. I'm I'm going to go off in this direction." But uh, no, streaming through Fantasy Grounds is really cool. I mean, I did get it correct one session, uh, mm -hmm. but then I wanted to add more and more, and then realized that okay, I would need probably several degrees and something to figure it out. So I stopped. Hmm. Nice. So so how long do your how long do your episodes go on? Um on uh, uh maze arcana is it is it a couple hours long is it um what, what's the we try to do show? about a three hour episode each time uh sometimes they go a little bit longer mm -hmm. it, but usually around three hours In the old day we used to play uh i think we started at five hours and started cutting back very or six hours and started cutting back and now we're down to a, a three hour seems to be optimum for people to be able to carve amount of time and, and pay attention yeah yeah no doubt i bet and um uh, does does Satin put all this together? Is there like a team? Um, I mean, like doing like adventures, and stuff, like running adventures and stuff. Does she have help? Because I mean, you know, doing a, a game that people are going to watch, you know, because you can't have a whole lot of mistakes if if you're entertaining other people. Um, does she get well, any help with that, or does she do it all herself? I don't know. I'm pretty sure the room proves you can have as many mistakes as you want and still entertain people. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but uh, Satine and Rudy do most of the stories and a lot of the tech technical stuff. Uh, we do have some other people who help out from time to time, but most of the loads carried by those two. Oh wow, that's that's impressive, uh, and that's that's mostly what she does, right? I mean, that's is that mm -hmm. her like her her big thing right now? And I that and writing, she, yeah. And she's working with uh, is she working with the uh, with wizards now? Is she like like is is Mazar kind of kind of partnered with wizards in any way? Is it is it attached to them in any way? Yeah, we're we're one of the first official D and D streams they had set up. Uh, we are oh, cool. the only official ever on uh, stream. 
Right. But, um, both Rudy and Satine are also part of the the DM adapts, which is a special group of DMs that write stuff for them uh, to release through the DMs Guild. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I've heard of the DMs Guild. Before. Yeah, that's right. Um, so getting the Eberron thing, that must have been really hard. I mean, you'd have to know, I don't know, maybe the guy who wrote it or something. Uh, is we that, do hang uh, out with Keith Baker quite a bit. Yeah. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Keith, Keith is good buddies with you all, right? Do yeah. now, does he live out your way? Do you guys like game with him and stuff? No, uh, no, Keith. Uh, I think he's over in Colorado. Is he okay? But he travels so much promoting his stuff. We do see him fairly regularly. Okay, that's cool. He, he games whenever he makes it into town. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, he was. On, he's been on our show. It was a good time. Mm-hmm. He's he's a good dude. I like him. All right. Well, that's all I have. Uh, Mike, did you have any other questions about Maze Arcana? Uh, no, I I think I'm I unfortunately have, wasn't able to check out any because it's like, what am I going to do? Watch like 10 or 15 minutes of an entire epic fantasy, you know, role playing right. <laughs> campaign. Um, you really want like 50 episodes to watch. Come on. Yeah, I know. Right. right yeah. So uh, but I, I, Pete and, you know, Kyle, you got to help me on this. But Pete, I think that you and I and some friends should get together and do something like this not as competition per se no. but uh, as something that <laughs> is so uh, huge it's, it's, there's no competition we all support everybody I mean, exactly. we're friends with the critical role guys we're friends with the girls got glory guys uh, we all support everybody in the yeah. in the in oh the yeah industry. and yep. and i mean kyle it's fun right i mean you've got you you're doing something where you're having fun and you're a part of something bigger and i just think that that would be something we should do pete <laughs> All right. Well, we, you know what we can do. Time. Yeah, you yeah. know what we can do, Mike. I, I don't. I'm not starting another show. I'm, I'm so fucking busy. I know. I know. <laughs> what, what What I could do. What I could do. And and James, you could help. Maybe we get a couple of us together, and we could do like a charity event or something. Much like you said with Char- charity twenty yeah. or something. Maybe we'll do some kind of Mythwits gaming charity or something, and, and yeah. just do like a, a one shot, like one Sunday yeah. or well, maybe not Sunday. Do Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> maybe do like I don't know, just but whatever. One day do like like four or five hours, and just you yeah. know, and then maybe a, a Friday like a to Saturday marathon. <laughs> oh, you know what we could do? do like Force Gray. Force Gray does uh, an ongoing campaign, but they only have a game every now and again. Yeah, okay. We could do that. But you know what I'm thinking, Mike? You know what I'm thinking? We get what? Chris Pierce, right? What do you yeah. think, James? We get Chris Pierce and we have people in the chat room suggest changes and Chris is supposedly this amazing Iron GM that he yes. should be able to switch shit on the fly and keep it interesting. What do you think? Oh. Like every time somebody makes a certain donation level, oh, Chris has go. to switch it up. You yeah. know, it's like they'll say, "All right, I'll donate $20 to your charity if Audibles. The, yeah, the, the, if you yeah. take this audible. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> most of the time when we do that on streams, we have like preset selections of generic things, uh, like a, a bonus to the characters, like a heal, or okay. um, a, or they can throw in an extra monster or a trap or something like that. So that gives a little bit of framework so you don't have somebody go, I'll pay $500 for them to all die. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Pete, what you're basically saying is you want to create a D and D cam show. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Hello, Elgar, Ooh. you're so cute. Right. Oh, look, I just got a whole bunch of gold coins. <laughs> I'm at the gold level. <laughs> All right. So anyway, it always it always, it always goes, goes there. Off the rails with us. Yeah, it does. Always yeah. to there. All right. So so let let's do this. Let's um. Uh, unless unless there's anything I have grossly overlooked, uh, Kyle, is there anything that I have not spoken to on the, on Maze Arcana that, that people need to know? Other than the link. I'm going to give links in just a second. Up. Okay. No, All right. Well, no. everybody, make sure you check out uh, Kyle's Facebook page. You can find him at facebook.com, Kyle, K-Y-L-E-V-O-G-T dot fan page. Uh, you can also catch twitch.tv Maze Arcana. That's M A Z E A R C A N A. Um, is there any any other places they can find things that you that you would want them to find things? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Kyle Vogt. Okay. All right. Fantastic. And if you want Kyle for your uh, vanity project, please contact him directly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll work for vanity, right? All right. So. <laughs> 
so, all right, so we are going we're going to move on to the game now and tonight uh, I gave Kyle a choice I, I don't usually do this um, wow. but being that we like we like Kyle and uh, I didn't know whether he wanted you wanted to be more of a promotional thing on the, on the Maze Arcana which I assumed you might be so I put two games together for Kyle let him pick uh, so we are going to play here we go ready it's it's game time with the Mythwits. I'm your game master, Peter Bryant, and on this episode, we are playing Bet the Geek. I have taken questions directly from the D&D 3.5 edition SRD. Each round, I will ask Kyle a trivia question. Before he answers, Kyle, pay attention. Before he answers, I will go around the room and ask each of the panelists whether Kyle will get the answer correct or he'll get it wrong. So Kyle, poker face, panelists must also hedge that bet by one, two, or three points based on how confident they are in Kyle's geek foo. Once all betting is in, Kyle will reveal his answer. You don't need to write down or anything. Um, there will be a total of five questions, and each panelist will start with ten points. Mike will be manning the scoreboard oh, and will right. update yeah, us. Scoreboard. Yes. I'm glad I said that. And we'll update us at the end of each round. And Kyle, they'll be able to see the score as we're doing this. It's in my it's in my OBS. Okay. Uh, we'll start with three warm-up questions to help us gauge Kyle's abilities. Good luck, everybody. And it's now time to bet the geek. All right, scores are up. Um, God, Mike, I love this thing. By the way, I'm going to take a tiny little break to do a little infomercial here. I got this stream deck. This thing is awesome. I don't have to go to my OBS and hit anything. I'm just like click, 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 click. It's fantastic. It seems to be working good too. So anyway, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm just, I'm, I'm happy. It was my Christmas present. My Brought to you one. by. <laughs> Brought to you by Stream Deck. <laughs> all right, all right, Kyle. If you are ready, you can, um, you can answer these. We're not going to bet on these at all. These first three. I just want to get a gauge of where you are. All right. So put the camera on him so we can all see too. It, it's on. It's on him. All it's right. Him. All right. What is the hit die of the monk class? In three point five, D sixes. It's D eight. Uh, mm. All right, question like number two. That's he, all right. I like That's how right. he knows. Like, like we're doing three point five, and he knows yeah, yeah. that. You know, it's like, oh, on a Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. What is the re the alignment requirement for an assassin? Yeah, I know first and second edition, third edition, it might still be evil. Yep, any evil. That is correct. And then good. your th your yep your good yeah, that's good your third question what ability do dwarves start the game at negative two charisma fantastic all right we got a good contestant here Mike mm. good one all right mm. so here here we go all right uh, Kyle your first question and again don't answer this right away we're all gonna bet Mike you're on the scoreboard um, yes, and it's all showing up nice and good okay. Um, it might get out of that. Okay, never mind. Sorry. All right. <laughs> All right. Kyle, first question. What ability modifier may you apply to melee attack rolls? We used to call them. We, oh, you're not nope. supposed to tell me yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to go around first. I yes. See. Yes. Yes, I am. All right. That's fine. Whether I got it right or not. I, I will come. I have a fifth one in the bank. Don't you worry. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Let's try this again. <laughs> it's fantastic. What is the favorite class of an elf? All right, Ooh, Mike. Geez. Oh, that poker face is nice. Oh, I'm going two points. He knows it. So two points let me see if I do it. this right. Yes. Uh, and two. Okay. So there you go. All I, right. That's all right, James, you're next. What do you think? Does Kyle know this? I don't think he does. Like, uh -huh. it's just the look on his face, I don't get it as a poker face. I kind of just get it as a, I don't know. So I'm going to go two points in the opposite direction. All right, Mike, All right. two points, no. Okay. And uh, I think, I think I'm going to go with James on this one. I'm going to say, uh, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm a little more confident that he 
come he doesn't know? I'm going to go three points he doesn't know it. It's a tricky question because uh, when I played D&D, they didn't have favored classes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say uh, that he doesn't know the answer to this one. All right, we're all set. Kyle, what do you think? I would say it's mage or wizard. Fuck, he got it right. Oh, that is correct. Uh, thanks, Good for buddy. you, Mike. Mike takes <laughs> so, the lead. What do I put in the correct <laughs> column, Pete? Uh, Points. Yes, you got. Yes, you got it correct. Oh, oh it's a Y. Okay, yeah. that's what I. <laughs> it's all sorry, folks. It's all automated. So, oh, why didn't it? <laughs> hmm. Was all automated. Fuck it. There it is. There you go, Mike. <laughs> Just type it in. Fuck it. All okay. right. Okay. And you'll have to do the other ones, too. I, I don't know what happened to no the... Problem. There's a formula in there, and for whatever reason, it's not there anymore. All right. That's fine. Uh, all right, Kyle, next question. Uh, how, much an, how much additional damage does a flaming weapon deal? And uh, I'm going to go first on this one. And I'm going to say, yes, you know it. And uh, I'm going to bet the house. I'm going to go three on this one because I can go as high as three. So I'll go three that you know this one. Uh, and I'll make James. James, you're next. All right. I'm, I'm going to say yes as well just because my my last super insight <laughs> was so wrong. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go yes at two. Yes at two. All right. And Mike, what do you think? Could you repeat the question, please? All right, the question was, how much additional damage does a flaming weapon deal? Oh, there's so like, no, no hey, doubt I'm he gonna... knows this. <laughs> All right, right? He's a D&D &D god. Okay. <laughs> Don't let me down, Kyle. Uh, I'm going three yes. Three yes, okay. And All right. Was that James was a yes two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm a yes three. All right, gotcha. All right. All right, Kyle. Hey guys, I haven't played 3.5 since before the Pathfinder split. Uh -oh. That's okay. okay. It, it, Just so you know. Doesn't matter. So it's, it's rusty, fine if you guess. I think I will go with a D6. Yes, that is correct. Yes. Correct Mundo. All right, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stall just a little bit till Mike gets caught up with us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's my fault. I probably cleared the formula. I out. had to switch to right. manual, Captain. Right, uh, we had to go. To, we had to drive a manual speed. All right. Now, um, one of you guys, I've been playing D and D since the box edition. Yep. Like the wood boxes. So sometimes the editions clutter up in my brain. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's the beauty of this game. It's difficult. We it's yeah. it's okay. This game isn't about what you know, really. It's about no, what we can I'm guess. To help you guys hedge your bets. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> all right. So uh, so we'll we'll do this question. I'll have to go dig up another one real quick, but that's fine. I got it. It won't take me a second. Um, what is the breath weapon of a green dragon? And I'll go first on this one. Uh, I'm gonna say no. For one, no for one. All right, Mike. Could you repeat the question? I, I love that you would do this. this. <laughs> what is the breath weapon of a green dragon? Oh, everyone knows it's weed. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, man. It's like I wanted to fight. I really did. I'm pretty sure that's the hemp dragon. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's Puff the Magic Dragon. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go as well. I'm, uh, I'm only hedging. I'm, I'm sort of game theorying this a little bit, but I'm going to go no for one as well. No for one. Okay. And then, uh, so James? I, you know what? As, since he kind of gave his um, gaming pedigree, as it were, I'm going to say <laughs> yes at three. Ooh. Yes at three. Okay. All right. So Kyle, what? Uh, hi Kyle. What does what what is the breath weapon oh, of a of a green uh, dragon? Clarification: Do you want the damage type? Uh, just just what it's what it is. You know, like we all know, a red okay. dragon's fire, right? African or okay. European? So it's poison. <laughs> it's poison. Okay. No, it it is a no? cone of corrosive acid gas. Sure, that's not the black dragon. Yeah, Pete, are you I, sure it's not the black dragon? I can, I, you know what? I can check. It is possible James, that I, you've played D&D before. Yeah. What, uh, what do you say? 
for 3.5 man I, I do not actually i own those books for about a year and then i think i either burn them or sacrifice them to some ancient deity <laughs> no <laughs> uh I mean, I, I love after and burn your books. <laughs> no, I I love first. I I love Basic Expert, uh, the Menser series, the first, second, third is kind of one of those apocryphal things that I pretend that didn't happen, and uh, then fourth was interesting, but not D and D. This is all my opinion now, and no. then fifth is just kind of like the sweet spot. It it kind of brings in all the thing I love about D and D. A Jonathan uh, tweet was doing three point uh, three and three five, and he always was a big fan of those skill based systems. I mean, if you look at ours, match, he just loves the oh, let me point everything like crazy and yeah, yeah. So I think it it deviated quite a bit there. So I'm I'm, right. I'm not that far from you. Well, from according to the, I'm looking at it right now. The SRD says the breath weapon of a green dragon has. Uh, uh, has one type of breath weapon, a cone of corrosive acid or gas. Now, just to be fair, oh, let's wow. look at the black. Let's look at the black because he might have the same thing. Black is might be a stream of acid or gas. Oh, could be, could be. Uh, black dragon is uh, a line of acid. Tricky, tricky, mm. tricksy, tricksy dragons. Yeah. All right, so here, here's here is the last one. Let's well, but the do... good news is, Pete, you and I what? are correct. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, um, James, just so you know, and I'm going to give the scores here uh, for, so that everyone <laughs> will be able to see. Uh, that's a minus three for you, buddy. Uh, now, I am in the lead with 16. I don't know how this happened, but I'd like to thank the Academy. Uh, <laughs> James has three points left, and uh, Pete has 11. Oh, all right. All right. Okay. So uh, let's do this, Kyle. Uh, let's do Ooh, ask him the chromatic dragon question no no because then he has to name all i'm not doing that all right how about this uh, how about this name all what? five heads of the chromatic dragon what <laughs> no no <laughs> let's do this let's, let's do this what you know i'm even going to use the one from uh from the last one we used i'm going to go this is an old tem cask favorite what oh god <laughs> <laughs> It's inside joke, Kyle. He got so okay. mad at me. All right. What does the center eye, what ability does the center eye of a beholder have? All right. And I'm going to say, who doesn't know that, right? Tim <laughs> um, Kask doesn't know that. No, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, plus three that he knows it. Three points that he knows it. Uh, I'm going with... Uh... Oh, see, here's my disadvantage, Kyle. I don't know anything about D and D. So you don't know how easy or hard these questions are. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Beholder, you know. I know it's got a lot of eyes. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna uh, go game theory here. I mean, uh, you know what? No, I'm gonna give. Should I give Pete a chance to win or not? That's up to you, know. man. Whatever. You know what? I'm gonna go. Do it. Do you? Two Two points. Sorry, Kyle. This is sort of a just a, a, a game theory thing. So two points. He doesn't know it. Oh, oh, you're gonna try and pull wed. I see. I see what you're doing. All right, James. I'm gonna say three. Yes. Three. Yes. All right. All right, Kyle. What does the center eye of a beholder do? What is its magic ability? It's an anti magic ray. Yes. That uh, is absolutely what were you, correct. Were, how many points were you? Yes. Two. Three. Or three. Okay. I went all in. All right, so that's three for you. That is three for James, and that is minus two for me. Son of a bitch, Mike. You had to tie us up. You had to tie us up. All right, you know what? That's it. Kyle? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give this one to Mike because Mike never wins. Mike? Aww. You are a big winner. <laughs> Even a blind squirrel gets a nut once in a while. That's right. Broken clock is right twice a day. Right. And, uh, so I like. I, I don't think the ones I, that are missing hands. Those aren't right ever. <laughs> no, right. I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to thank uh, the room for this win. Without it, <laughs> I'd be nothing. You'd be nothing, Mike. Nothing. Not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kyle. Well, thank you for joining us. I hope you had a good time. Uh, fun. Thanks, you're man. always 
you are always welcome to come back on just to hang out. You can even come and co-host if you want some time. Um, I, I I went out of my way to get you on because I've been saying this for about a year now. I've been like, I gotta find a reason to have Kyle on the show. I like Kyle because you know <laughs> just because we've done we did game school and we did some other stuff. Yeah. Um, so uh, so thanks for coming on. Thanks uh, for really having me. Appreciate it. All right, uh, everybody, make sure you go and follow Kyle uh, on Facebook, and I'll give that out one more time. Uh, Facebook, uh, forward slash, forward slash, Facebook, ah, I can't speak, Facebook.com forward slash Kyle, K-Y-L-E-V-O-G-T dot fan page, and make sure you check out Maze Arcana on Twitch. Uh, it, it's pretty cool. Um, Kyle's on it, and uh, Satine runs it, and with Rudy, and they're all great, funny people. People. And they have you have different people come in from time to time uh, and guest star on that from from what I've seen um, and it, it's a good show it's a good time uh, if you like D&D you'll love it and it's high production it super high. not like this <laughs> not, <laughs> not like this fucking mess it is high functioning all right We're all everybody in the same room when we play that game yeah, well, that's true. And you have a, you have engineers, and you have you don't have the host isn't engineering as well as writing. <laughs> so. All right, everybody, here we go. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits. We're live on Facebook, Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guests questions or just banter with the other misfits. Mythfits. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. Find us on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Or you can just listen at Mythwits.podbean.com. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. Listen to my dog rattle her collar. <laughs> Make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread the Mythfits. Mythwits, God, fucking messing it all up. Over the love over the entire planet. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't sell it, and don't crush it up and snort it. Make sure to check out studio187.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Thanks everyone for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, hi Mike. Where's my money, bitch? Give me my money. Where is it?